Matt Dartnell, son of Terry Dartnell, didn't have much choice but to be involved in Greyhounds from a very young age. He took over his dad's licence seven years ago and hasn't looked back since. We sort of lived here all my life basically and we've had the kennels in the back garden and as soon as I was old enough to sort of gallop a dog and walk a dog I was doing so and uh, you always knew when you had a bit of work to do when dad used to pick us up from primary school in your school uniform you put your wellies on head over to the gallop and start galloping dogs you know and there were, there were 35 kilo dogs and dogs were dogs then and I wasn't big enough to stand astride them so you had to let one off and then give that one 10 yards and let the other one off and then run up the top of the gallop as quick as you could to put the leads on them and, and, and bring it back to the kennel. And was that a happy child? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. It was uh, kept me out of trouble and uh, always sort of racing on a, on a Friday night or a Saturday night at uh, Wembley. I used to jump in the van and sort of, you know, tidy up the coats and the leads and uh, watch the dogs run and watch them win or get beat and shout them home if I could do and stand with my granddad. And uh, fish and chips on the way home and then back to the kennel. It was a bit of a late night, but you used to keep in the back of the van on the way, on the way home and that was that really. It wasn't always your plan to be a greyhound trainer though, was it? Uh, no, I mean, uh, went to college and then applied for university and then um, sadly my mum passed away in that summer. Um, so deferred for a year and ended up deferring for the rest of my life really and uh, ended up doing the dogs and uh, yeah, things have changed here. Um, we've had some nice, decent dogs in the kennel and uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've had a good, good spell, good spell. And it was a difficult decision for you to become a greyhound trainer because I know that all your friends did go off to university and some of them went into the city and had big money and things. Are you, are you pleased that you're a greyhound trainer? Yeah, I think you had its ups and downs, like uh, any job or any sport does. And uh, some of the times you're sort of looking at it thinking, well, "What am I doing this for?" When you're, uh, you know, you're loading up eight runners going to Swindon or Reading, and uh, you know, soaking wet, covered in mud, all the dog gets beat. You're thinking, you know, late nights, what am I doing this for? Um, and then when you've got some decent dogs in kennel, and you're and you're competing against the best, and you're beating them, and um, you're working hard every day and it's, you get your rewards and you can pay your mortgage and you can pay the staff and do everything you want to do in life. You've got three sisters as well and together with your dad you're a very, very close family. Is he proud of you going on to take over his licence and what you're achieving? Yeah, I think, I think he's very proud of me, very proud of me and um, you know he, he knows I can do a dog as well as he can. Um, we have buckles every day of you know what what dog we should gallop or swim or trial or, or whatever. But uh, you know it's, we have different views, and uh, he's he's sort of created my views, and um, we do everything together. And you know every every father and son are going to have you like ups and downs, but uh, you know that's that's what life is. And uh, you know he, he likes leaving me in control, and uh, he's quite happy and quite proud of me when he watches me on the track with the dogs and, and doing well. And when you first took over the licence, I used to ring you and ask you to do interviews and things. It was very much a case of ask the boss still, ask dad. But it feels now like you are the boss. Does it feel that way to you? Oh, no, I still ask dad. <laughs> <laughs> What's been your greatest success as a trainer? Um, I think runner-up in a derby. I think that's, that's the one, we, that's the one we, everyone, every greyhound trainer's chased. Every owner, every breeder, everyone's chasing that derby trophy. And uh, to be so close a few years back with uh, Farlow Ironman, um, it's a dog that I went to Ireland and picked up myself. Um, my uncle, when I took the licence over, he wanted me to buy him a dog. And um, it took me a while to find the right dog and I finally found this one for him. And uh, he got three of his friends involved, so there's four of them that owned it. And um, just, it was just a great summer. Um, we won the semi-final and we just had the dog spot on. Um, didn't get the luck in running and finished second in, in the final of the derby. Well, you know, as an achievement, it's unbelievable, but you were only a, a couple of lengths out of uh, picking up the big one. You were gutted, weren't you? I was absolutely gutted, I must admit. And I'm not a big drinker, but I had a few drinks that night. Um, but on the back of it, you look back and you think, what an achievement. Has it made you even more hungry? You've had four finalists now. Has it made you more hungry to win a derby? Yeah, we keep going, Julie. We keep going. Um, but yeah, I think it does. Uh, and you, uh, when we're even looking at the breed and we're always trying to brief speed, looking at... You know, dogs that have won the derby, all the lines that work well for the derby. Um, and it used to be, Dad was attached to Wimbledon for, I think, 10 years he was attached there. So um, when I first got my licence, that's the first place I paraded dogs. So, and I remember being there one night and parading the whole loop of the track with crowds all, around, all the way around the place and Black Tyler Restaurant and the boxes filled up. And it was such an occasion and, um, you know... I know Wimbledon still got the derby and it's not as glamorous as it used to be, but it's still Wimbledon, it's still 20 minutes down the road and it's still our local track. 
you have won some big competitions as a trainer, Golden Jacket, the Olympic, Peterborough Puppy Derby, to name a few. Do you enjoy that side of it, the competitions and getting to the finals, the big occasions? Yeah, I think I think when I started out, just took license over, over from Dad, we had some real nice dogs in the kennel. Um, Patsy Byrne was, was our owner and, you know, it'd be sadly missed. Um, and we had some real nice dogs. And I think when Dad, Dad sort of handed me the license, he said, look, if you can't trade them dogs to win competitions, you won't become a trainer. And, and we done a very good job with the ones we had. Um, Derby finalists, Irish Derby finalists, and, and picked up numerous of trophies. Um, and now the, the kennel's changed somewhat. I mean, um, the loss of Patsy and a few other owners, have, uh, you know, not interested in the sport anymore. Um, we've got a contract with Toaster, and we're just concentrating on the Toaster at the moment. And I think we're going to just build it back up again. Are you enjoying life at Toaster? Yeah, breath, breath of fresh air. I think we needed it. Um, and they've treated us really well down there. Uh, it's a lovely place to be, and I'm, I'm proud of my sport again. You go there, and the facilities are second to none. Um, they've got a great management team. Um, Kevin Aikerman behind them all. Um, Chris Page from, from, from Walthamstow, and they're, they're running a really good uh, track there. Are you still breeding pups there? Uh, yeah, we have a litter a year. Um, we had two litters last year, actually, um, one litter the year before that. So, yeah, we're still ticking along with the pups. We've got some nice ones on the track now at Toaster. It helps to keep your numbers up. Um, it's a nice for the owners to follow them, you know, from, from birth right through to, um, to racing and, and beyond. Um, so it's a lovely way to do it. So what are your ambitions in the sport looking ahead? Are you sort of fairly chilled now and just, you know, go to toast and take your money or have you got big ambitions still? Uh, still got big ambitions. It's nice to have Derby dogs in the kennel, but I think the reality sort of hits in when you think, hang on a minute, you know, you, you graded runners, they pay the bills each week and each month. And um, I think that's what you need to do in life. If you keep paying the bills and, and, and keep yourself above water, I think that's what any anyone or any man can do. And I think the uh, the Derby dogs are just the, the cream, the icing on the cake, really. Um, so they're, they're lovely dogs to wake up to and walk around the field and, and worry about, but... Uh, at the end of the day, if you're sending graded runners to Toaster and you're having a few winners and your strike rate's sort of 25% like ours is, you're doing well.